and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media. Thomas, we have a lot we want to catch people up on, so we're not doing Trump tweet decodes tonight, but believe me, we would have said all this anyway. So I'm just going to give you a name, and I want you to go wherever you want to go with this name. Ready? Yes, and in terms of Trump uh, tweets, uh, he's been putting out these little videos. He's just telling it, folks, one message after the next. Just listen to what he has to say, and you will actually hear the truth. And it's so refreshing to hear the truth. So it's always an honor to even address the Trump tweets, which, in fact, are winning the war for peace. Okay, here's the word of the day, or the name of the day. Jeff Sessions. Oh, that slimy... Uh, oh, you mean Benedict Arnold. Oh, you mean uh, Rip Van Winkle. No, oh, you mean Mr. Magoo. Oh, no, you mean the man who came out and said that he took control of the Department of Justice the day he arrived there. He has yet to take any control whatsoever. He said in his statement recently, which has been all over the news... And by the way, everything you say, I will be making notes so I can include them in the link in the description box below. So he says that he has carried out the president's agenda... You must be out of your mind, Mr. Sessions. You have not carried out the president's agenda whatsoever. As a matter of fact, he's had to go behind your actions to to basically, uh, again, cause marijuana to be illegal when it's not even a federal vantage point that we should be taking, but it should be taken from the states, and the states have already, it's, it's already been ruled on. So he has no right to come in to, to do the things he does, which are not part of the Trump agenda. So sorry, people who say that we should follow the plan, trust the plan, trust Sessions, trust Horowitz. No, incorrect. We cannot trust Sessions. We must get rid of Sessions. But we told but we that cannot. group a long time ago that what what the lay of the land would be. Absolutely. We cannot get rid of Sessions at this moment because he's tied to the Mueller special counsel investigation, which is a huge political hot potato. And the problem is, just like the Democrats don't understand with DACA, with the border, with immigration, with taxes, with anything real, they don't understand that they're losing on all of these fronts. And so they have lost on the front of Robert Mueller. Only very, as Trump says, low IQ people could possibly believe the mainstream media's continuing nonsense about Russia and Trump when Rod Rosenstein, Rat Rodenstein, has come out and said there was no collusion and there was no obstruction and Trump is not even a subject of the investigation. This is, it's hysterical that anybody, really, if you're that dumb, perhaps you should not vote for any Republicans and especially any MAGA Republicans. So please, if you're that dumb, don't vote. Matter of fact, I don't even know how you know that it's the day to go vote. Anyway, well, they know because George Soros sends them a reminder text and tells them that once they get there, you know, they get 20 bucks. And picks them up in a bus and drives them from state to state and from polling uh, po- uh, polling area to polling area so that they can, in fact, vote many times in one day. This has been shown. What I like is that during the Obama administration, guess how many cases of election fraud were prosecuted? Two. Okay, even the conservative think tanks say it's between three to five, even upwards to eight million illegal aliens voted in the 2016 election. And they want to say only two people have been prosecuted. That's it. And Jeff Sessions says that he and his whole team, the entire Department of Justice, all that tells me is that then the entire team has to go. If they are all working together, he said that he will not allow the DOJ to be politicized. Hello? Michael Horowitz proved to everyone, all the American people, Jeff, know that the DOJ was certainly politicized and there was, in fact, a conspiracy which was directed by the Democrats, directed by Obama and Hillary, against the Republican candidate Trump, Trump Trump-elect, President-elect, and Trump the president now. It continues, Jeff Sessions. Here's the deal. Okay, no politicalization in the DOJ. How about Michael Horowitz's report which any, anyone could look at that and see that it was weaponized politicalization. And what did you do? People don't understand this. That report went to Jeff Sessions. He's the one who took action on it. That investigation had nothing to do with Russia. And what did Jeff Sessions do about the politicalization between the DOJ and the FBI and the CIA and the NSA? 
Nothing. So, Jeff, you are a liar from the moment you stepped up to that podium. Almost every single word out of your mouth was a lie. And for those of you who are following Q, and Q says, go and listen to what he says, because, and they're shouting for joy that Q has been proven to be verified because Sessions himself refers to trust the plan. Uh, No, he refers to trust the illegal plan of the conspiracy. Yes, he does. He makes reference to all the crimes that he has committed, in other words, not getting part of the DOJ, recusing himself, not acting, not acting upon politicalization of the DOJ and the FBI, not kicking Rosenstein out when he found out the truth, which was the fantastic politicalization of the FISA abuse, which included Sally Yates and many others. He's done nothing about any of them. He did nothing about the Michael Horowitz report. He's done nothing about Strzok and Page. He's done nothing about Bruce Orr. You are one of the worst liars That's what you that call I've ever seen. That's what you call stonewalling. Yes, it's stonewalling. And and the, if you can just visualize it, this is where the battle is. We have right there on Jeff Sessions' desk the destiny of America. And Trump can't fire him. And people are very frustrated that Trump won't fire him or Rod Rosenstein. Remember what, what happened when he fired Comey, which was a setup. Well, this is a bigger setup. This is a setup that involves Sessions, the entire DOJ, including Rod Rosenstein and Mueller, uh, old mule face, and the entire special counsel investigation team, as well as all the other people involved in the conspiracy. They are never going to look at the truth. Jeff Sessions is part of it. He was part of Uranium One cover-up. And by the way, today, Trump showed a video where he has basically closed up the holes of CFIUS that allowed Uranium One to take place right under the agreement, under the nose of and under the agreement of Rip Van Winkle, Benedict Arnold, Jeff Sessions. And so Sessions is as guilty as the rest of them. That's what we found out. And then we realized by looking into it that he was a Bush plant that was sent in early on, screaming and yelling, first one out of the gate, supporting Trump. And so, of course, they know that Trump always rewards anybody who wants to be on his team. He'll give anybody a chance. Look what he did with Omarosa Manigault. He paid $200,000 for her wedding reception at Trump Tower. He knew that she was what she is, that she's a dog and a rat and whatever you want to call her, a weasel, a wolverine, a honey badger. Anyway, the point is, he knew who she is. He knew who Michael Cohen was. He knew who Paul Manafort was. He had to work with those criminals to get through a criminal system. And so, of course, he knew that he couldn't trust Omarosa and she carried a recording device. Why doesn't she go to jail? Because Trump can't put them all in jail. But eventually, he is doing it from the uh, sneaking around the back door. And we've been mentioning this. We'll talk about it in other uh, yeah, things coming up here. But not yet, not, not, yet. not yet. Jeff Sessions cannot be fired. Because he has the appearance of someone who is going to fight it if he were. Because why? He won't step down when his own commander-in-chief orders him, the general, to take orders, which then he refuses to take. So the strength will come after the midterm elections. Correct. And they're doing everything they can to try to set those up so that Trump loses. But I do not believe that the Democrats are going to take control of either the Congress or the Senate. I believe they're going to see because the tide is going out, a red tsunami coming in, as we've already seen in almost every single case. There was one recently in in Wyoming where a Trump-supported person did not win. But besides that, it's probably, you know, well above 95% anyone he endorses as MAGA wins. That's a very good indication. Plus, they're saying the lying statistics, the Democrats always start coming out early, lying with all the polls. And so now they're lying like crazy. And then the other polls are coming out because they're jumping the gun before the election, to lie with the polls. And they show the truth of the polls. And they show the numbers of the fact that there are record numbers of Republicans even coming out for the primaries. Well, everyone listening, please make sure that your circle of influence, your audience, every single person gets out and votes at the midterms. Uh, Don't trust the polls. Don't listen to the polls. Don't be discouraged by the polls. Get out like we did in 2016 and vote. And Optech has been revealed as the software that was created by the rogue CIA and the United Nations and Lord Malik Brown and others, Jimmy Carter. And what did they create it for? So they could manipulate all elections. It controls every single 
Every single digital voting machine in America is controlled by the same software that could be hacked by a junior high school student. And I just talked with somebody who was there and he watched this girl in less than two minutes hack any machine, any voting machine. She was 11. Truth News Headlines had those videos up demonstrating that to you. But he was there and he said they hacked all those machines so quickly that they didn't know what to do with the rest of their time. Okay, so that's what's going well, on, folks. they have to be easily hackable because it's Democrats who would be doing that tech, you know, the work behind the scenes. I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. Yes, that a dim-witted Democrat <laughs> would have to be able to control PC Anywhere a little bit so that when they walked by the machine at the end of the night, they could change the votes. Right, yes, okay. but that is exactly what was happening. And we have films we showed last year on Truth News Headlines of the Secretary of State And their secretaries, the only people allowed in there after the machines get locked up, going back in, opening up the cabinet, standing near the machine, working on their phone, and then leaving. That is called PC Anywhere hacking the machine. We have films of it. That's like saying there's no election corruption in America. And that's like saying, oh, Michael Cohen, let me explain something to folks. Michael Cohen has not been indicted or convicted or tried or convicted. He confessed in a plea deal, and look at the way the plea deal seems to indicate that his eight crimes that he confesses to are connected to his supposed election violations for Trump. No, no, no. Let me clarify that for people. He probably will not be convicted if he cooperates and lies like he did for this investigation when he was caught red-handed, you know, uh, taping all of his clients. They took tapes of Trump being Uh, taped by his own lawyer and released them. And then you have Jeff Sessions saying he won't allow any leaks. And if there's any leaks or improprieties and that any investigation he's doing, there's no leaks on. How about the special counsel that leaks every single day? Jeff Sessions, even on weekends. You are the worst liar. You are a disgusting, disgusting wharf rat that has, has... you look kind of cute, you know, from a certain angle, but you're well, Thomas, as bad as the worst. We have to wait till after the midterms because then Trump will have the support he needs in Congress to make these big, bold moves against these folks, right? Oh, you sound like the reasonable one now after I start okay. calling Jeff Sessions' name now. I'm not finished calling him Well, names. hurry up because we need to get to the next name. If Jeff Sessions were a man... And he weren't a bold-faced liar who is, in fact, defying the commander-in-chief and he will not do his job. And he knows that he cannot be fired because it's a setup. It was always a setup. He was sent in from the beginning as a setup. He was one of the moles in the campaign. That's the reason he admitted to talking to the Russians. Maybe I talked to them about sanctions. He knows he does. He did not. Because why? He was recording every one of those he, the recordings were in his office. All he had to do was play them back, and then he would know he didn't have to recuse himself. He had to recuse himself because he and John McCain were completely complicit in the Russians who came in to do the setup. Has anybody seen John McCain? Yeah? No? I haven't uh, seen any no, proof of life. No proof of okay. life. Now, as I want to scream again, really, really, really loud, Judicial Watch just got, through FOIA, more documents that prove what I've been saying, that... The dossier was planned from December of 2015 in the Democratic National Committee. We have the WikiLeak emails. Now those emails have been foiled, and now we get them, and now we can address it. And now everyone's addressing what I have been screaming since day one. Read the WikiLeaks, and you will see the crimes that were committed. And every crime that was committed, they turn 180 degrees around and aim it at Trump. All you have to do is listening, listen to what the Democrats are saying and you will hear them describing their own crimes. So what do we really have with Jeff Sessions? Michael Cohen is a perfect example. The very material that they're using in the special counsel was seized illegally and yet nobody's saying anything about that. John Podesta and Tony Podesta get complete immunity and go pushed into the Southern District of New York, where there will be no determination, mark my words, there will be no determination of what happens to those two who are equally as guilty as Paul Manafort and Rick Gates until after the special counsel is done and it's made its report. Now remember, all that comes from this special counsel is a report, just like a Michael Horowitz report, unless there are indictments. 
Michael Horowitz brought no indictments for politicalization between <laughs> the DOJ and the FBI, which there couldn't have been any more clear politicalization in U.S. history. And so if you think that there's going to be anything more than these fake indictments against Russians who can't answer the indictments, like the 25 indictments that were brought and then the, by Mueller against fake Russians, and then one of the fake one of the three companies, Russian companies, is beating him in court, just beating him down like a dog because he's a terrible lawyer. If he doesn't use strong-armed, illegal, fake justice, he doesn't win. He never has. He covered up 911. He covered up Fast and Furious. He covered up the 10 Russian spies that were part of Rosatom being in this country stealing Uranium One and paying off Hillary Clinton through the foundation. He was part of all of that. He was right there. He McCabe is one of his assistants, okay? We're talking about a little tiny criminal cabal that has taken over America because they tell the senior executive service members what to do. We're not going there yet. Am I done with Jeff Sessions? No. People are really mad that Trump won't fire these people. He cannot fire them, and he doesn't want to fire them. Every day that goes by... They reveal more and more of the deep state members. It's beautiful. So when we talk about security clearances and John Brennan, I'm going to address that question because the Department of Justice has the ability to give out these fake security clearances or to give very high positions in the senior executive service without even giving a security clearance. And that's what has happened to America. Okay, let me say the next word, the next name, because you're just going to beat me to it. John Brennan and security clearances in this country. John Brennan was a communist, and then he became a radical Islamic fascist. He wrote all of the laws so that we couldn't prosecute any of them. He's never stopped a single attack. He's actually done nothing except when he was in the CIA to defend things like Benghazi, to defend ISIS, to help create ISIS, ISIL, to defend all the bombing of Obama. 200,000 bombs were dropped. Nobody has ever been a more militant president in U.S. history than Barack Obama, and he was supported by the CIA. He was supported by the NSA. He was supported. They, They were all Democrats. And so he was basically on Hillary's team. In the Crossfire Hurricane, I want to point this out again, there is no FISA abuse concerning Crossfire Hurricane because there was never a FISA warrant pulled by John uh, Brennan because John Brennan acted on his own without any intelligence and without getting any permissions from anybody. He just made up stuff. He made it up and he made up the what was called the small group and then the intergroup, um, uh, the uh, interagency group. And then that became the struck group, which was really directed by John Brennan from the beginning. The PP document, the dossier, the Russian dossier, the PP document, that was, where do you think the PP thing came from? That was John Brennan. He heard a rumor from uh, someone, uh, actually a a, a Russian. It's probably what he does in a hotel room in a foreign country. He heard from a Russian in Ukraine that there was a film of Trump being peed on by whores. So he sent out Sergei Milligan. Million uh, Pachenko, he sent out Felix Sater, he sent out all kinds of people who are his Russian agents and Russian assets to try to find this document. He spent in just one check a hundred thousand dollars to to pay Sergey Million to go look for this. They couldn't find it, so what did they do in the end? They made one up. Now, in the long end, in the long, like a year after all of this, they came up with the film, and it was not Trump, and it wasn't even prostitutes. And it was so obvious that there was nobody peeing on anybody, okay? You can see where they would take something this stupid, make a false counterintelligence remark that then starts John Brennan, who is like a, I don't know, a rabid dog trying to kill Trump. That's really what he's like. He's trying to chew Trump apart. And when you talk about John Brennan... You're talking about a person who was brought into the CIA by a man who's still in jail for being a communist spy in this country. He was also voted for a communist back in the 70s. And he basically has defended Islamic terrorists around the world. And he was part, of course, of the John Kerry 
I don't even know what you call it, treasonous, seditious act of letting 2,500 Iranians into the country. Just yesterday, two of those spies were caught. Okay, there's many of them. And if you read the articles, you'll find that there's many, many, many Iranian spies. And they're doing all kinds of things to disrupt this election. The two who were just caught only came to the news because they could say, you see, you see, you see, Iranian spies interfering in our election. Yes, they were brought over and paid for by John Kerry. John Kerry was paid lots of money to deliver those pallets of money to the Iranians in the fake Iranian nuclear deal. Now notice that the second that Trump puts the sanctions on, they're firing missiles that they said they didn't have. That proves that Trump was right. They're also having their back broken, and Angela Merkel tried to give them five hundred million in cash from from the Deutsche Bank, actually from the the old Central Bank of, of Germany. Couldn't make it, even though Soros, you know, told her to do it. So, what do we really have with John Brennan? We have an enemy of the state. He is a traitor to sedition. And if you watch where he speaks on the news, and if you watch what he has said previously in the news, and if you listen to James Clapper who's doing the same thing, but he actually condemned John Brennan and said that, you know, he got carried away with the orders that he was given by George Soros, which was bring Trump down, say Trump is a national security issue, get something out there talking in the echo chamber of the mainstream media that says that Trump has an impeachable offense because of national security nonsense. John, now I just want to point this out very clearly. And if any of you are listening, please hear what I have to say. If there are 75 or 175 names of people who have top secret security clearances who come out and say that John Brennan is correct, then that list, Mr. President, please arrest all of those people because what they just said was a crime. They just said that a man committing crimes, major security breaches on the mainstream media, that they put their top secret security agreement on the line for that. And if you know what these agreements say, that is the reason for you to lose your top secret security agreement. So you can have a top secret security clearance, but you may not have access. But trust me, all of the people who just said that they supported John Brennan not only have a security clearance, they have access, and it's probably illegal access. And let me tell you what the genius of our president is doing about that. And before you do, we have an Aim for Truth reader who took those names, and by the way, that article is in the link in the description box, and has begun to match them in the plum book as being senior executive services. He hasn't gone through the whole list. When he does, we're going to be posting those names. There are 80, there are 800,000 people in the corporate intelligence world that have top secrets, excuse me, 825 827,000 people with top secret security clearances and intelligence. 67% of them are corporate intelligence. They all have top secret security clearances and they all have access. And because Obama made it a law that the raw intelligence from the NSA is made available by simply using your single sign-on access code, that means, remember, Obama weaponized all aspects of the federal agencies by saying before he left office, go after Trump, get this information, take it, steal it if you have to, get it, use it against him. We must resist. Okay. And they did that. And that's why so much of this stuff is still hidden because it's hidden by, as you've pointed out, senior executive service members in all branches of the federal government and federal agencies. So I'll tell you what Trump is doing in just a moment. Those corporate intelligence agencies have no, none, zero loyalty to this company, country. Every one of those corporate intelligence agencies does work for foreign countries. And they allow the five eyes, uh, Canada, yeah, Australia. People will recognize the names on the list. We can't go through it all here in the audio. Look for yourself. Every one of them is a corrupt SES member. I would have predicted that from the beginning. And if they're not then they're just outright deep staters who must have a nice offshore account. But anyway, going on, those people got their top secret security clearances as SES members without going through a background clearance. Imran Awan, the Pakistani national who had 
Congressional SCIF clearance, that's the highest you can get, Secured Compartmental Information Facility. That's higher than top secret. They got him that clearance because Andre Carson, Al Green, Gregory Meeks, and others wrote letters for a year and a half demanding that he have access. Now, imagine that. And we believe that he went through Hillary Clinton's Senior Executive Training Service, and she personally, her group, made sure that he got in without having a background check. He got in on a lottery immigration, and then he brought his family in through chain migration, and what ha- through chain immigration, and then stole, basically, so much stuff, it's unbelievable. The crimes, I can't even list them. Paid more money than even Congress people are paid. So, so criminal. Worked for the DNC. Worked for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So what did Jeff Sessions do about that? He assigned one junior Department of Justice attorney, first year out, who didn't even speak. Did not speak during the largest espionage trial that we've ever had in U.S. history did not even speak. And during it, because they sent someone who do nothing about the case and took over the case and tried the case in the court, direct, now remind, mind you, this is, this is directly from Jeff Sessions. He said, remember when Trump told him to look into the other server and Imran Awan, what the Democrats did and his access, Imran's access and his family, blah, blah. what did Jeff Sessions do? He came out and said, I appointed someone. That person did not even speak during the trial. Jeff Sessions sent another lawyer who did a horrible job and brought up all this espionage stuff in a case about mortgage fraud where Imran Awan did did the same exact thing that Paul Manafort is in solitary confinement for and in jail for. He lied on a mortgage form. That was it. That's what Paul Manafort did 12 years ago for his daughter. They tried to get him all these 12 years and only now because of a grand jury indictment can they actually, you can, you can, you can indict a ham sandwich in a grand jury indictment. Anyway, so Imran Awan, what happened? He now, as we predicted, not only doesn't have to wear a tether, he can leave this country and the time that he had that tether on counts as time served in jail. He was given no fines and given complete immunity to everything that Jeff Sessions' DOJ lawyer went into that courtroom and threw out as vomit onto the floor that then gave complete immunity to Imran Awan on all aspects of everything he stole. Now, mind you, we have the proof of all of this. And that's what Jeff Sessions did. So cue tards. All I can say is if you trust Jeff Sessions, you'd trust, I don't know, a wolf in sheep's clothing. You would trust anyone. Well, well, you have to question then who is behind Q that they would tell their group to trust Sessions. I know. And that they thought that Sessions is on their side and said so yes. in his recent lies. Every word he said was a lie. So you, when you say Sessions referred to trust the plan, that's the plan of Mueller, Rosenstein, Comey, Obama, and his weaponized administration. And it is sad that anyone could trust Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions is an enemy of the state. He's treacherous. He, he's a He's a He's treasonous, he's treacherous, he's seditious, he's a criminal, he's a liar, and he was planted there. And we have the proof of it. And we know why, because of his vanguard stocks. We know why, because of he sat on five committees that had to allow Syphius to approve Hillary Clinton's payoff. And they must have enormous money. blackmail on him. Oh, he's got offshore oh, accounts. Yeah, okay. All he's right. being paid, I assure you, large amounts of money. And I can name who it is and where well, the ahead. accounts are. because they well, George Soros, of course, is paying him in his Cayman Island accounts. Everybody knows that. George Soros has John McCain paid off. Proof George of Soros donated through Russians who donated to the McCain Foundation when then McCain comes out, says he has nothing to do with the foundation, and then immediately $10 million come in there, and then what does he do? He controls where it is spent down to the nickel. He paid for the first dossier when Andrew Wood met with McCain early on in the spring. They already had the dossier planned. It was already cooking long before that. It started in December. Andrew Wood told McCain, McCain sent his his guy, David Kramer, from his institute, the McCain Institute, to buy a copy. 
Well, he couldn't get a copy then because it wasn't even written. They were still setting up Franklin Forar. They were still setting up the Trump Tower, blah, blah, blah. They were still doing the setups of the framing of George Papadopoulos and Carter Page, and they didn't have the Pfizer for Page. And John Brennan got anxious. And so in July 16th, I believe, Crossfire Hurricane, he just started an investigation with no intelligence whatsoever. And that's how far they stuck their necks out. John Brennan may go to jail over this because right now... Jail? That's yes. all? No, no. When you go to jail for these security violations, he needs. He was to, in the military, this and is, then they can they can yes. prosecute him in a military court for treason. And that's execution. It could be hanging. I don't know why we on, back off of this. This is these are people who are going to overthrow America while they had put Americans fast asleep. Even James Clapper now. Well, is going against John Brennan, who he was defending tooth and fang Yeah, before. because he knows what happens to traitors. Traitors? John Brennan couldn't have a bigger sign on himself, traitor. I mean, he is a traitor from the get-go. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Here's the secret. When he was the head of the Riyadh CIA post, they shouldn't legally be anywhere, what happened? The bombing happened. Isn't that interesting? And then what happened here? A bombing. And then what happened in Oklahoma? A bombing. Look into it and you'll see the same group of people and Brennan's standing right near them being trained to step up to be the next person to coordinate these black ops, counterintelligence, crossfire hurricane, coup d'etats in foreign countries, and now a George Soros purple revolution here in this country, not only through election machines, not only through campaign finance illegalities. And by the way, Stormy Daniels was paid $375,000 along with that other whore by David Brock and Media Matters. Everybody knows this. It was in the news. Why would anybody be concerned that that Michael Cohen, who was being retained for huge amounts of money to handle the fact that Trump was dealing with who? Some of the Russian oligarchs right in New York. He's dealing with all the criminals. So he hired Michael Cohen I won't go into who Michael Cohen's teacher was, but but basically Michael Cohen worked for the one of the most corrupt lawyers in New York City, and he taught him all his tricks. So what did he do? He bought New York taxi medallions. Notice he's not going down on most of those charges. He pleaded to minor charges. Notice they're not na- stating which of the eight charges they were. And then he pleaded guilty to election violations, that's not in a violation. It didn't come from the Trump campaign money. It came through his personal lawyer who paid off people I know everybody right and left that. because they lie. To, what do you pay them off to do? Sign a non-disclosure agreement so they'll shut the F up. Stormy didn't shut up. Neither did the other whore. They're going to lose. They'll lose whatever they have. All their wealth will be lost in this. Trump, it's not hurting him because everybody knows he didn't do that. And I just want to say one more thing, and this is very, very, very important. Trump was begged by Reagan, by Nixon, by many. Roger, Roger Stone, Paul Manafort, Kelly, all of them begged Trump. How many times have you seen Trump on TV being asked whether he's going to be the president? And them going, I think you make a good president. Even Oprah Winfrey asked him. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you think that Trump would have won uh, run, excuse me, run for office if he had a guilty past like the Clintons have with Jeffrey uh, Epstein or all of their crimes? No. He knew that he would be vetted and that he would be crucified. So his friend who runs National Enquirer, and did I not yesterday yell out to the conclave, what, conclave, what will Robert Mueller do next? Quote Onion? Quote, National Enquirer? Did I not say that? Yeah, you did. Okay, I didn't know until today the conclave told me that they're going after this guy named Pecker who owns National Enquirer and uh, Mueller is giving him immunity to testify for the special counsel. But that's that's, uh, Trump's friend. But Trump's friend, we know Trump has used him to keep Trump out of bad news. So so the deal is, is there any bad news? No. There's going to be no dirt because Trump wouldn't have run for office if there was dirt. You'd have to be stupid to know that he wasn't going to be attacked the way that he's attacked. Okay. Third one, take it home. People are a little concerned because they don't see things happening. But we see it because we see the um, what's happening in government. 
and let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's going on with senior executive service and all of this merit-based uh, stuff. Senior executive service, if you want folks to take your frustration out, go after the senior executive service. But don't worry, Michael Mulvaney and his assistant that Trump appointed, who gave, he gave them, he even wrote an order saying they have complete authority to restructure the entire federal agencies. Now, Trump is not allowed to go in and end federal agencies without approval of the Congress, but he can sure mix them up. So what is happening? We have known this for some time since Trump came into power, since he knows about the senior executive service members, since he didn't get to appoint that many of them. They've held up 1,400 of his appointments. Those appointments are to senior executive service positions in many, many, many cases. They won't verify them. They will not, in Congress, confirm them. 1,400 presidential appointees. Oh, but during Obama's time, he kicked out 4,000 members of the SES and replaced them and then added more so that of the 10,000, he literally placed 8,500 or so of them himself so that it would be his army in the government from then on because those are career politicians who don't lose their job. That's a Bruce Orr who can't lose his job, a Peter Strzok and Andrew McCabe. These people can't lose their jobs. Peter, uh, Bruce Orr, most of the Obama administration were separate SES hires so that they wouldn't have security background checks so they'd find out their mob links in Chicago. Hello? How can someone not look into Valerie Jarrett and not say you can't get a security clearance because you have mob links? You, you were indicted for your criminal activity in Chicago, but you're going to be the chief of staff in the White House controlling even the president. And remember, he had a, contro- he had a handler before the White House that was Michael Obama. He had a handler in the White House that was Valerie Jarrett and Rahm Emanuel. And if you look at their criminality okay, in Chicago, but- you can't, it, there's no end to it. So, Let's get back to senior executive service. So most of those are Obama weaponized appointees. Now, the great thing about Obama is his stupidity. So he was told to make sure to rewrite the SES documents so that senior executive service members rotated on a very regular basis into positions they weren't qualified for. Now, you might say that's crazy, and it is, but it's not. That way, they only do the bidding of what their bosses tell them. And that's the reason 175 of them came out and went for Brennan putting their own security clearances on the line because they know all of them are on the line because of the following. Trump allowed Mulvaney to change this rule. Everyone dealing with national security issues must have a military-grade security clearance before they can receive the clearance. And then they have to go the next step for each step of their access. Well, that's not going to happen to anybody in corporate intelligence. They all lose their clearances. All the SES members, or at least certainly the Obama appointees, will lose their security clearances because they're simply SES security clearances. There was no background checks in many of these. So what we see and we hear is that in all the different federal agencies right now, the following is happening. Not only have they all been told they're going to have to go through military background clearances, and many of them are quitting because they know that they won't pass, and then if they get that mark, that scar on them, like Brennan is now going to have the scar on him that his was pulled. If you turn it back in like mine, I had many of them, I turned them back in when I left them, actually three years, because they could reactivate me for a number of years. I turned them back in when I was no longer reactivatable. Well, they, they didn't reactivate you, but Betsy did. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, that's right. And so they those people, when they left the military, they were supposed to turn them back in, okay? And they didn't. They kept them because that gets them positions in corporate intelligence. It gets them positions in hedge funds because they're dealing with all the insider trading information. This is like letting bankers work on the stock market. Bankers have insider trading information. They shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the stock market. But this is intelligence people who were in the military, who left the military, keep their intelligence and use their access clearance because Obama weaponized the NSA. That's the reason Admiral Mike Rogers left because the NSA had been turned into a joke of abuse worldwide through the five eyes, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Britain, and America. 
No, those four I first named, they're all our enemies. Just look at our trade deals with them. Just look at what they've done with the dossier. Britain and Australia helped create the dossier. Alexander Downer was the first person who whispered the little thing into Victoria Newland's ear. And then she made up the story about she got a telephone call. Then she told Brennan. Then Brennan went nuts. Oh, sorry. Uh, going back. Brennan needs to be put into jail right now by U.S. Marshals for the crimes he's already committed on the television. I only watch little bits of them, snippets. And I can tell you that anyone who's ever signed a top secret security clearance and got the accesses that I've had knows full well. You can't say those things. You can't speak about any of the jobs you did for five years. So putting someone as the head of an intelligence committee on the MSM, the mainstream media, is illegal in itself. They well, can't talk about what they did for five but, years. Comey talked about presidential but, conversations. But CNN is a CIA, so Brennan's just <laughs> one of their guys. Well, that's true. And Nellie Orr was, uh, uh, of course, CIA until the next day when and she worked for Fusion is, GPS. Peter Strzok is CIA slash FBI. And Bruce Orr can't be fired <laughs> because he sits on the ultimate review board for this uh, senior executive service member, so he won't fire himself. He's probably going to give himself a bonus this year yeah. because they demoted him, so he's going to need an extra thirty-five to 75000 okay. He'll give himself the presidential award. He'll give himself the... Uh, come on, this is the way it works. I'm not making this up. So these people, they're not suffering. Peter Strzok wasn't fired. He was fired from the FBI. He was loaned to the FBI, and he was loaned to the special counsel. He is a regional district coordinator. He's a top dog in the CIA counterintelligence. He hasn't been fired. Don't be fooled, folks. And don't be fooled by these people like uh, Lisa Page and, and Carlin and Baker and them who quit. That's just so that they wouldn't have to answer to Horowitz because they feared the inspector general, but they didn't need to fear the inspector general. He he interviewed he's Bill Priestap, team. and Bill Priestap isn't being held guilty for anything. And he's another anything. senior executive He was service. Peter Strzok's boss. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. So, and Brett John, Kavanaugh is senior executive service too, and I want to know why nobody is talking about that. And his wife. And his wife. And Lisa Barsomian is the it, wife of, of Rat Rodenstein. Who has represented every one of these criminal people. Yeah. How is that not something he should have recused himself of? How is that not collusion, corruption, the worst of fake justice? And it's just the same old people obstructing justice, slow walking a Jeff session, slow walk to, to the oblivion, and then coming out and literally, let's remember this, he came out and contested his own boss's words and said he wasn't going to do what his boss said and then accused his boss of political politicalization when he had the crimes of politicalization that he did nothing about. So, John Brennan, he goes to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200. Jeff Sessions, he goes to Guantanamo Bay. And I think the entire Mueller team needs to simply go to intern camp, internment camps and just grow some vegetables for a while, and for about 20 years, and then we'll hear their case.